In this video, let's take a look at the four operating modes of dash module number one, or DM1, the compass module. Now, as with all of the modules, we have the option, when we first apply power, of displaying the firmware version. But because there's no numeric display on dash module number one, we have to do it in a slightly different way. And we use the four bar gauges marked N, S, E and W to represent the firmware version number. The firmware version comprises two digits before the decimal point and two digits after the decimal point. So for example, if the firmware version were 12.34, we'd illuminate one LED on the, on the first bar gauge, two LEDs on the second, three on the third and four on the fourth. Now the version of software being run in this unit, the version of the firmware is actually 0 0.02 or 00, 00.02. So you'd expect when we power up, we'll see zero bars, um, no LEDs illuminated on either of the first three bar gauges, but two on the fourth bar gauge, thus indicating version 00, 00 0.02. So let's go ahead and power up in normal running mode. And you see momentarily we display those two LEDs on the final bar gauge, indicating we're running software version 00, 00.02. Now, in normal running mode, the direction is indicated by the arrowhead indicators and the four bar gauges. There will always be either one or two of the arrowhead indicators illuminated, and there'll always be 10 LEDs in a combination of the bar gauges illuminated. When we're heading due north, the N arrowhead will be illuminated and all 10 LEDs in the north bar gauge. We'll um, move the sender around um, into a northwesterly direction. So let's do that. And you see that as we start to move away from due north towards due west, we get the north and the west arrowhead indicators illuminated and we get fewer LEDs in the north bar gauge and more LEDs in the west bar gauge as we continue to move more in a westerly direction away from north to a direction more or less northwest we'll have equal amounts of LEDs illuminated in the north and west bar gauge as we continue to move more and more west until we get to due west, somewhere around here. We see now we only have the west bar gauge illuminated and the only the W arrowhead. As we start to move southwest, as you'd expect, we get LEDs illuminated in the south bar gauge. And as we go right the way around, we come into the due south, southeasterly direction and northeasterly direction. So they're the displays that we expect to see in normal running mode. Now, the signals for the compass sender come from a remote sender. We're actually in the process right now of developing a sender unit which plugs directly into the back of the DM1 module. If um, there's only certain combinations of inputs which are valid, so if the um, power is lost to the unit, or for example, if the connection to the unit is broken or even the fuse blows, then we'll have an invalid combination of inputs. And that will be identified by the DM1 as a fault condition. And the, the unit will respond like this. Let's pull the fuse on DM1. And what we see is a, it's just joined again. There we go, that's a fault. Um, what we see is a fault condition indicated on the bar gauges and the diagnostic indicator flashing rapidly. Let's put the fuse back in again. And you see we're indicating a good display again. Um, we also have fault detection on the power supply. If we, take, if we take the power supply below 10 volts, let's go ahead and do that. We see the diagnostic indicator flashes again but this time we don't see the fault pattern on the bar gauges because the fault is a fault with the voltage supply, not a fault with the sender. Let's bring the voltage back into range. And now let's take the voltage above the upper range limit of 15 volts. 
you see we detect a fault again. Bring it back into range and everything's good again. So that is normal running mode. Let's power down the unit and we're going to power up now in show mode. Um, don't worry too much about how to get into these different modes, we'll discuss that in a later video. Let's concentrate on this video on what the various modes do. So we're going to power up now in show mode and the option to display the firmware version is can be switched on or off in any mode. So let's power up in show mode um, without showing the option of the firmware version. And we go straight into a show mode where the display just cycles around in a clockwise direction. So we're going northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest, and back round again. And we've just got the diagnostic indicator changing when we're in one of the due north, due south, due east, or due west positions. That is um, show mode. Let's power down again. And let's power up in output test mode. Output test mode is similar to the output test mode of all the other units in that it just exercises each LED, each segment of each LED, and does a few patterns on the various gauges as well. So that's the north bar gauge tested, the south bar gauge. Let's see if we can run it right to left, yes. And do this kind of pattern from inside to outside, outside to inside. And then the east bar gauge. Just let that finish. And the same thing on the west bar gauge. Now each segment of each arrowhead will be indicated, will be tested. South one, east one, west one, now all of them. And we do a brightness test where we'll increase the brightness on the bar gauges and dim it down again. And also on the arrowheads and the diagnostic. And then a test on the audio tone generator on the board. And at the end of that audio tone generator test, it will just go back around the uh, cycle again. So there we go, we're going back into um, testing the bar gauges now. Let's power down. And finally, let's um, show what happens in input test mode power up in input test mode. Now in input test mode, um, the arrowheads are used to indicate the state of the push buttons. Um, we'll talk about this more later, but every module has two push buttons connected to it, um, one and two. This tests the state of push button one, that west indicated, that uh, west arrow. The east arrow shows the state of the push button number two. And we have a toggle switch, a latching switch, the state of which is indicated by the north arrow. Now what about the rest of the displays on here? Um, this uh, west bar gauge at the bottom indicates the state of the six ground switched inputs which drive the direction information to the module. So if I move the external send around, you'll see that those values change. It's only the right hand six LEDs that operate because they are the only ground switched inputs we have to the unit. This upper bar gauge represents a binary number of the value coming from the analog to digital converter on each of the um, each of the analog inputs and we can cycle through the inputs by pressing push button number one. This is the first analog input and the value coming from that input 
which is one of the brightness potentiometers, is FF, indicated by a binary number of 1111 1111. Pressing push button number 1, uh, it displays now the second analog input, which is again a potentiometer, which is not connected on here, that's why it's reading FF, or binary 1111 1111. Pressing it again, we have an analog input, which is not connected, another analog input, which is not connected, and finally, an analog input representing the voltage supply to the unit. That's the voltage that's measured by the power by the voltage monitor. If I move the voltage up and down, you'll see that binary number change. This is about 10 volts, and that's the um, that's the binary equivalent of the uh, the voltage being measured at the monitor point. Move it up to about 15 volts just before the thing trips. And you can see the binary number goes up. So that is input test mode, and I think that pretty much covers dash module number one, its operating modes. Thanks very much.